G'day. One of the things that I've been meaning to do for a while is make up some more machinist jacks. Uh, these are some that uh, I inherited uh, in a box of stuff. Um, in fact, there's only one of these and I made up another one. I should have made up more at the time, but that's, that's my mistake. And these have got a swivel top on them. The, the, the piece is missing. Uh, it's in the drawer there somewhere. But I've decided a couple with, with flat tops would come in handy as well. So I've gone and used a setup to copy those. Uh, they're not finished, they need a little bit of work on the base and I need to make the, the screw part up. But the interesting part is how to get a non, should we say, a non-linear profile from a lathe. People these days look at that, oh yeah, it has to be CNC, it has to, no it doesn't. You can do it on a manual lathe. Um, it may not be as accurate if it's on a CNC machine, but it's it's getting pretty close. And if you if you're careful with your setup and you get your, your hand eye coordination good, you you're right. You can also use it to make the um, a socket version, uh, and so that that'll go in there. This isn't quite perfect, but it's only a, a demo to show you that yes, it can be done. Uh, and I can see this sort of thing being very handy if you were making say or wanted to make say a, a jet engineer intake uh, so you want a nice smooth bell curve or you were making a, a chimney piece for a, for a top of a steam locomotive um, scale steam locomotive you might want to use something like this and so based on a drawing uh, and a, a bit of uh, mucking around on your lathe you can actually get those sorts of curves. This is after a bit of polishing, understandably, but um, it's certainly possible. This is the setup I'm using for uh, producing the profile. To start with, I've got the profile I want, and because my tail stock has got a flat, flat um, surface on it, I use that as a convenient spot to uh, to put this. I've darkened that line up with a with a texture, which makes it a bit wide. Um, there's actually a pencil line in there which I can see but it wasn't being picked up by the camera so I've left that there. I've got a stylus here with a round tip on it. Now the round tip is simply because the tool that I'm using has also got a round tip. Okay, that's a quarter inch in diameter, that's a, that's a quarter inch diameter thing there. So I can, I can trace that uh, pretty well and know that that tip is going to accurately indicate or reflect, sorry, what the, the, the tip of the tool is moving. Okay. This is all on a, a, a magnetic dial indicator base and I use this because I can attach this to the, the cross slide here without too many dramas and position the arm where I need it. And so what I'll do is when I start doing this I'll line up the, the tool with a couple of spots like the, the OD and the end here and I'll, I'll then position the stylus here so it matches that on my drawing. Okay. Over here, standard setup. I've got my my uh, tool set up here on the on the tool post. I've got my my work, and the idea is that uh, as I come along, I engage. Well, if you've got power feed, I engage the power feed at a very slow speed, and then I basically watch the stylus here. And as it moves along, I crank the cross slide in so that. My, the tip of my stylus is following the line on the paper. And that's basically all, the, all there is to it. Uh, it is one of those things that takes practice. This piece here is, a, is pretty much a practice piece. Uh, you can do it for bores as well, and I'll be demonstrating that a bit later on. But uh, this, is, this is a way of getting a non, should we say, non-linear shape on a lathe. Uh, I've never seen this done elsewhere, and uh, I put it to a uh, to a, a chap I know who uh, uh, is very much into into steam engines and how things used to be done, and he's uh, he's never heard of it either. Um, so maybe it's a it's a new way of doing things. I do know that once upon a time there were things called copy lathes, which have had a uh, there was a basically a template and a hydraulic. Uh, or a, a stylus that drew, drove a hydraulic system which then drove the tool. I guess you call this a manual version of that. I've got my tip just in contact with the work and 
you should just be able to see that I've got my stylus right on my line there. I'm then going to come along to here, get my tip sort of right on the end of my um, material, and it's not as easy to see, but that's centered on that line. Now, if I were doing this, should we say, for some precise parts, I would probably have this drawn in CAD and I'd probably have a couple of witness lines there so I could pick up these points. Because these things are just a, an ornamental foot, uh, it doesn't matter as long as I get them looking around about the right. Probably worth saying too, you don't have to use your power feed for this. You can wind both handles at once. I just find it's a bit easier to keep track of one handle rather than two. But if you wind your feed at a constant rate that way, you can you can work this handle. And certainly for this stage of operations, which is probably considered more roughing out than, than final finish, um, it doesn't matter and it's probably a bit quicker anyway because you can plunge and you can take some, some decent cuts. Uh, at the start here and, and taper off towards the end and not have to worry about it quite so much. If you're trying to do matching parts, you probably need some form of uh, center line to work to, or some sort of reference to work to, which is probably the center line. So, what I've done here, this is the mirror image of, of that profile. That cross represents the um, corner of the hole that I'm about to, to bore into. But what I've done to start with is I've put the center line on there, I've put my, my pointer on there, and as you can see, the pointer stays pretty much on the center line. So the center line of my profile is the is the is the, um, the the spindle of the lathe, the axis of the lathe. After that, um, as you can see, I reverse the 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 stylus. So I've got my point on the end, and the reason for that, of course, is that my tool, which is a little boring bar, has that same angle on it. And so, what we're trying to do there is make sure that the the, the point of the of the boring bar on the, on the angle of the um, the stylus match. From there on it's just a, a question of repeating the same sort of thing, um, just it's doing it in a hole.
So just to see how good we are, or good I am, there's an original part with our template and you can see the templates, uh, it's not too bad. Okay, we've we'll got one of these parts with the same template. Yep, it's certainly within Kui. And the other one. That's, that's, uh, that's not too bad either. At this stage I thought I'd be congratulating myself on a job well done and when I sliced the um, socket I'd made in half I found that yes that was a pretty good fit but then when I looked at it again something has moved and so I've got more gap there so what I'm now going to do is remake this but uh, because I've thrown out the patterns, I'm going to have to start from scratch, and so I'll show you how that's done as well. Here I am set up again, so I've got my template in place, I've got my pointer in the in the right direction so I can actually see what's happening. I've got some tape just in case the magnets were the, the culprits and did slip. I've got myself set up so that the corner of the uh, hole that I've pre-drilled in my, my blank is lined up with the tip. This is just a bit of scrap from the, from the scrap box. Uh, doesn't have to be anything special, this is a bit of steel, could be aluminium, could be plastic, whatever. So I'm pretty much ready to go. Here we are after a little bit of uh, polishing with the uh, emery on the stick method. Uh, and that'll that'll clean up a little bit. But uh, as you can see, there's, there's still a couple of, of marks there, but that's okay. It's, uh, it's getting there. Um, I haven't got a full form plug to put in there with some, some memory on it to, to get it absolutely perfect but all I want this for now is holding the, um, the feet that I've made, the, the, the plugs that I've made, so I can then turn off the back and, and uh, counterbore that a little bit and that should be plenty good enough for that. So there's my secret way of making elliptical and other profiles. I hope that's a bit of interest to people and they can apply that to uh, some of the projects they've got going. Thanks to uh, those who inspired me, particularly the guy who gave me the, the engine parts and asked could I clean them up for him. It was interesting. <laughs>